Right. Now, are there some subjects that you think we haven't begun to touch on in celebrating abstract art that it would be good to stir up things with? Well, I wanted to... Uh, yes, you stir them up. Question. <laughs> ask a question. Please yes. do. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, uh, just following on from the point about the Rosco thing, I believe that when he, when he was refused that, when the restaurant was he was very upset. Uh, because obviously, they, but, but more from that point of view that he designed them for that, he intended them for that space. I, I was wondering when, when I make things, often when I finished making them, they're out there. I don't mind really what happens to them often in that sense. And I was wondering how you, Sandy and Patrick, how you feel about your work when it's, when you finish making. For me, okay. often the, the making in itself is the, 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 you know, is the thing. They're not there out there, then people can take them as they wish. Sandy, do you mind where your work goes? Does it need a good home, in quotes? Well, I think it always has a good home. Yeah. You know, it can't not have a good home, yeah. can it? You know, if somebody responds to it, they're going to give it a good home. Yeah. That's obviously where it should be. So, um, you know, I think that t takes care of itself, yeah. really, actually. Um, and usually, um, you know, I can think a lot of artists probably feel that, you know, I'm focusing on the one I'm doing. And then once I've done that, yeah, well, I'm sort of partly sort of uh, forgotten about it, and I'm moving on to the next one because that's the one I'm doing now. Although I do love having them around, actually. I mean, you know, I do. But I'm always slightly sad when they go. But then I'm really that actually creates the, the space and the time and the energy for the next one. So, actually, what about you? Yeah, I feel totally distant from my work when I've just finished it. I, I feel a sense of detachment from it, a real sense of detachment. So I've no idea whether it's any good or, or not. And I really rely on everybody else, particularly the dustmen and people, to tell me whether they like it or not. Um, what I, uh, you know, eventually then I start to get used to the thing and, li and live with it. And, um, and, and that does that feed or not necessarily into what you're doing next? Yes, it, do, it does. And, 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 um, Unconsciously, and, uh, maybe? No, it's, well, in a, in a stream, if you like. So when somebody says to me, what are you, you know, when you start a new canvas, what are you doing? You, you have this history of what you've done in the past. Mm -hmm. And so that you're not just starting with a blank canvas at all. You're starting uh, you know, to carry on the conversation you had with the last painting, mm -hmm. which is a conversation you're having with yourself about you know, where, your work, where your work is going. But it's, um, it's quite, um, I feel, I feel I also feel, once they've left me, they've gone into the world, I, I feel a bit sorry for them that they might just be, be, Roscoe said something about bruised by harsh eyes. Do you know what I mean? That, that really people aren't really going to give them much credit and I'll find one stuffed behind a wall somewhere all scratched and, you know, they won't really be, be valued in a certain way. Yeah. I, do, I do feel slightly protected towards them. They're a little bit like our teenage kids who we launch off. <laughs> exactly. Hope they won't come back too soon. Very nice. Yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. Uh, actually, you just said, I'm fascinated that you just said that you have no idea whether they're any good or not. Yeah, yes, that's absolutely Yes, right. and, and also what was said earlier about that the pur their purpose is to have no purpose, and, and it's what we bring to it. So I'm, I'm interested in, the, in, in how we determine whether a painting or a piece of art is good or not. Is it just that an, enough people um, have a positive response to it because if, if, if they're neutral things and it's what we bring to it that matters, why do we label some of them good paintings and some of them not so good paintings? Why? How do we, that criteria? I don't know. I suppose it's just you, you've got to make up your own mind whether you think it's good and there are group people and groups of people who have the power to impose what they think is good. Called the market. Called the market or called yeah. the galleries or called the art. The art, the art. Yeah, I mean, they, that's the sort of, that, I mean, I suppose that's the sort of reality of it, that just you have your, your personal attachments or disattachments and the people that, there, there are groups of people who, not in a kind of meeting that they have, <laughs> but just through their, through their actions then determine what, what Mr. the... Mr. Saatchi? Mr. Saatchi or... Mr. Gooding? Well, yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the answer is, uh, and you know, the person who said it most clearly and um, most early was, was Dushan, who was an extraordinary painter before he turned into something else and made other extraordinary works. Dushan said, 
the very, well, I think it's a very boring and ordinary thing he said, it is all down to the judgment of posterity. And what he meant was, both, whether things are good or bad, things are not intrinsically good or bad, mm -hmm. actually. Paintings and pots and sculptures, there's no way in which they can be good or bad in some kind of metaphysical way or some kind of uh, way that is not, that is divorced from the discourse. But they're good and bad is determined by the discourse, which is why I jokingly said, yes, writers do play an important role. I happen to think also that collectors and, and um, uh, gatherers mm. uh, and uh, like the people around the table, like the people who have come tonight, except this is exactly where a bit at the beginning happens. Some of these paintings, for example, and some of these pots, it's ceramics, have not been seen. The beginning of their um, history within, as it were, the, the realm of quality, are they good or are they bad, begins in this room. You know, and but it, it won't stop in this room, and it won't stop with anybody in this room having a particular opinion. Yeah. It, it'll be very much down to how um, other writers, and then the next generation of writers and collectors and so on. And all of these things can be distorted at any particular time. The market for the moment is mm. an incredible distortion mm. Look, of, what, of what value yes, is yes. in painting. Yeah. But then the market does what the market does, and the paintings will survive it, and the crap will go where it deserves to go. So, you know, it's it, it, but it'll be sorted out in that way. And some things get lost and left behind and then get picked up. You think sharks will ever get lost? Yes. What? You think sharks will ever get lost? Well, they disintegrate eventually. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, and, uh, the, Damien Hurst is, is often brought up in this particular, yeah. you know. How, the answer is, uh, we don't know. What we do know, of course, is that he, it fulfilled one important criteria, some of his work, that it has um, generated a huge amount of interest. Mm. And that is one thing. But then there are other artists who are very good artists who don't generate a great deal of interest. But the great thing is that there are virtually no really good artists who um, are ignored, you know, the, 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 uh, and lost. The, the myth of the, the, the genius in the garret, for example, um, is a good example. You know, it doesn't exist. Because uh, people see the work, and people make judgments, and the work goes round. Even if only artists see it, then the work goes round. Artists usually are the first people to know mm. who is really good in their generation. Mm. Um, those people who went to art school, and there are quite a few here, you knew who looked like to be the really good people that you were working with. Many of them fell by the way anyway, but there, there it is. But as I said, that, um, that whole business of the, the quality comes through that very complex um, discourse. And some people say, well, what about Van Gogh who didn't sell a painting in his whole life and we now recognize as a great genius? First of all, Van Gogh was already known to the artists. Gauguin knew he was a great artist. Cezanne knew he was a great artist. These were the people who were going to make it, make his um, reputation. Within five years of his death, he had an extremely successful show. Had Van Gogh lived, and he died at 37, he, in the mid-twenties, Van Gogh would have been around about 60, that young, and he would have been a millionaire. Mm. Because by then, the whole world knew something very remarkable. Uh, you know, he represented something remarkable. So, uh, you know, that, that's um, immediate success uh, is, is only one part of it. So, John, do you, with your gallery, keep a close eye on what's happening, you know, in the colleges and... Yeah, all yeah, the time. Yeah. And, and also, um, you know, anyone in a gallery always gets lots of submissions and, and I look at absolutely everything because mm. I love it. Um, I, I, you don't do, you know, unless you're Larry Gagosian or somebody, you don't do it for the money. Um, because there are times when things are very good, but there's a lot more times when things are not so good financially. 
if you put on shows you really believe in. There are shows that you could put on that would be commercially successful, but they're not necessarily the ones I'd want to do. But uh, Belle is right, the first person I ask is, you know, are probably other artists. Mm. Um, or, you know, the um, lecturers in the college, maybe sometimes. Um, but when times are not so good, you really, you've got to stick with the body, uh, group of artists that you already have, and stick with them. Because if you believed in them from the start, you, you stick by them and you can't keep taking on people because you just think they might be trendy or the next big thing or they're going to save it because it's a false way of doing it really. So what do you think will happen now when you know, times are not very good and you're uh, sticking I, with the artists you know but there's a generation coming up, what's going to no, happen to them? You must keep artists in every generation. Yeah. I, I, I have artists in the 20s, 30s, right. 50s, right up to 90s. I mean I still show Alan Davies, 91, but the youngest person I show I've already done one person show with him and he's still doing a master's, he's only 23. Mm. So, you know, that you, do, you do that. But uh, in case we were down, I just thought I'd, I'd come back to a story that Mel alluded to, which oh, right. just shows that the power of some things. I had no idea, John Hoyland was a great friend of mine. I knew he was a great friend of Mel's, but I had no idea that Patrick and himself were good friends. Patrick put up a little painting on Facebook a few weeks ago, and because I was coming here, I was keeping a more vigilant eye on Patrick's page so that I could, if he stuck up some paintings, go like or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and this painting came up, and I said, "Oh my God, I couldn't believe it!" I just it was like I was hit in the chest, and I saw the the painting, and this is just on my laptop, and I said, "God, I could just—it was almost like like John Hoyland was." just beside me. And so I, I wrote this message and I, I said, this is, uh, this is, you probably think I'm crazy, but when I saw this, I just felt kind of John Hoyland's spirit. And then Patrick had just painted the painting two days after he died, and that's it just inside the door. Uh, and which was just incredible. Uh, was it as good, as good in real life as it was on the, um, <laughs> on the screen? Miles <laughs> Anyway, sorry, I just thought it's... Uh, yes, well, thank you for that.